Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church on this beautiful Sunday, this beautiful resurrection day. It's uh, just gorgeous outside, a little bit warmer. We like a little bit warmer. And uh, just excited to be here on this day, knowing and celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ together as the body, as a family of God. Just so good to be here. So good to see you all here. So good to have you here as well. Uh, God's been so good to us. Um, really, th the only announcement is today is Resurrection Day. And uh, I did want to point out uh, this week, Kathy had a birthday and uh, Ernie has a birthday. Is uh, That was uh, Friday. Friday, Ernie had his birthday. And uh, so if you uh, didn't wish him a happy birthday in person, today would be an excellent time to do that is to wish Kathy and uh, Ernie happy birthdays. Uh, do we have any other announcements this fine morning? Ms. Brooke? We had an anniversary on Tuesday. It was 25. 25th hey, anniversary. Hey, How did I miss that? And happy birthday. Happy birthday. And happy birthday. 25 years. And what day was that on? The four. I don't know how that is not in my calendar. But I don't know how. I don't know how. Anything else? Any other announcements? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just praise you. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that we get to celebrate this day every day. Every day. Every Sunday. Every time we get together to worship together. We celebrate this event, the event that when people went to your grave on this morning so long ago, the stone was rolled away, the tomb was empty, and the evidence was there. You left the evidence for us so we knew what really happened. The shroud that covered you wasn't laying on the floor or thrown in the corner, or even laid across the tomb where you laid. No, it was neatly folded. Neatly folded so that anyone who came there and witnessed it knew. Just like a napkin at the dinner table back in biblical times, if the master had to be called away from the dinner table, if he laid his napkin on the table, he wasn't finished. But if he folded his napkin, it meant he was coming back. That's why your shroud was folded neatly in your tomb so that we would know. The evidence is incredible that points to your being alive. Thank you, Father God. Lord Jesus, bless our worship today. And Lord, we pray that our worship blesses you. Father God, as we come to you with our hearts, our minds, our spirits, Father God, Lord Jesus, lead us and guide us in our time today with just incredible gratitude and praise on our lips. In your precious, holy, amazing name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate. Let's sing together. You can stand. We're going to sing First, we're going to sing number 167, and then we're actually going to sing 169 after that, 167. A serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today, I know that He is living whatever. I hear his voice of cheer And just the time I need him He's always near He lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today He walks with me and talks with me Along my narrow way He lives, he lives Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He 
page over to 169 <clears throat> because he lives <laughs> Oh. 
Praises, prayer requests, or updates this fine morning. Praises, prayer requests, updates. Miss Tina Smith. Praise. I made it through. And you're here today. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for good results and good recovery. Praise the Lord. Maddie. Yes, yes. Ashley's doing some better. We're very thankful for that. We have uh, any other praises, prayer requests? Miss Pam? I have a praise. Next Saturday evening, we are going to Warren's House for a fish fry. Warren's House for a <laughs> wow, fish fry. Wow, we... the Lord. <laughs> answered nice. prayer, answered prayer. So, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Just to be able to get together with family again. Healthy family, praise the Lord. Bob? I'm, I'm thankful to be able to walk in today. Yes, thankful you're here today, Bob. So thankful. Thankful for your recovery and continue continue to pray for his recovery. And he's got, got uh, more to go. Long way, but that's all right. That's all right. We're trusting for complete healing and restoration there. Well, I'm thankful my grandson, Travis, is here today. I mean, thankful I Travis is here. Hey, Travis. Very good. He said he remembers doing some egg hunts his own self. Yeah, he wasn't he that tall. <laughs> he wasn't that tall when he did a, the last egg hunt here. Yeah. So thankful. So many th things to be thankful for. Just being here. Just being able to be here is uh, something to have great gratitude and see families together. It's just a beautiful thing. I love love seeing us all together. So thankful. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Well, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, you know the cries of our heart. Yes, a lot of times we, we do these, this prayer time, Father God and Lord Jesus, uh, we speak it out loud. We speak out a lot of, of requests, a lot of praises. Thank you for the praises today. Father God, what a day to lift up praise. Lord Jesus, thank you for Bob's recovery. Continue to be with him. Continue to heal him. Be with him as he continues to move forward in that process, Lord Jesus. Thank you that Tina's here today with us. And Father God, Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful you were in that situation just like you were in Warren's situation, Father God. Lord Jesus, as many of us spent hours on our knees praying, praying for Warren and his family, Father God, to see you come through. Father God, just even more proof that you're real, that you work and that prayer is so incredibly powerful that when people get together and they pray in agreement, you hear and you do. Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful, Father God, for our family and friends here today, Lord. Whether they're here with us in person or whether they're watching online, Father God, Lord Jesus, we're just thankful that we're here together with you, Lord, our living God, our Savior, our Lord, our King. So thankful, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray that you continue to be with Mike Zimmerman, Lord Jesus. Father God, continue to be in that situation. Continue to be with uh, Chester and his family, Lord Jesus. Father God, we, we have so many, so many. It's hard for me to remember them all, Lord Jesus, but thank God you do. Lord, just be with uh, everyone we know who's sick or hurting or lonely. And Father God, above all things, Lord Jesus, we pray for the lost and unsaved that just can't fathom 
why we celebrate this day so heavily. But Father, God, Lord Jesus, help us to shine light wherever we go. Help us to show your love wherever we are. Lord Jesus, help us to impact our families, our communities, our neighborhoods, our streets, our cities, our towns, our state, our nation, and our world. Lord Jesus, and that we represent your kingdom well wherever we go, whatever we do. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful, lovely, wonderful day. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing 157, another great song. If you were here Friday night for the Good Friday service, or if you watched online, you know, we sing the old rugged cross pretty often. It's pretty poignant on Good Friday, but it feels a little different on Easter Sunday, singing this great song of our faith. Let's sing this great song. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the nearest and base for a world of lost sinners will slay. So I'll change.
I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Today we come to worship you in your house. Lord, we are grateful on this Easter morning, what we call Resurrection Morning for Jesus. We are thankful that uh, he is obedient to you and that he went to the cross on our behalf. It's our sins. And that sent him there. It was our sins that had him beaten. It was our sins that spilled his blood. <clears throat> We're very grateful. That blood covers our sins. The Lamb of God sacrificed for us. I heard recently of the time between that pain and pleasure of the resurrection. And we are grateful, Lord, that during that time in our life from when we believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. That we're in this world as a time of still having troubles till the time of peace and the resurrection of when we are resurrected, Lord. We are grateful that you love us. That you never forsake us. And we are your children. And you watch over us. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here this morning to, to worship you on this uh, beautiful Easter morning. Um, we, we give thanks for all the, the blessings that you have uh, provided us. and uh, We're so thankful for all that you've, uh, you've done to, to lift up those on our prayers and concerns list. And, and we pray that uh, those will, on the list will, will continue to look to you for your, for your love and strength. 
Uh, please accept these tithes and offering with a small token of our appreciation for all that you've blessed us with. And, uh, uh, be with us as we uh, uh, just uh, give thanks for the, the great sacrifice that, that Christ made on, on our behalf. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Madeline. So we're here we are on Resurrection Sunday, our Sunday morning that families get together and spend the day together and have meals together. What a great holiday it is. It's a great holiday. And of course, we in the church, we who follow Jesus, we who are believers, it's much, much more than that. But I want to take us back. I want to take us back to that day. The day of Jesus' resurrection. You know, if you were here for Good Friday service or if you attended a Good Friday service or maybe you just meditated about the time of his crucifixion, the day of his crucifixion, the day they nailed him to that tree and he died for us. His body was broken. His blood shed for us. Just like we just celebrated with the Lord's Supper with communion. I want to take us back because we know what happened because we have the benefit of the historical evidence from the Bible and from history that tells us what happened. But the people who were following Jesus didn't understand. They didn't know what was going on. So in your life, have you ever had, if you ever had a time in your life, I know you have, adults especially, have you ever had what do we do now moments? What do we do now? What now? What do we do? Well, I have to tell you that the followers of Jesus, the disciples and the followers of Jesus, it didn't work out the way they had thought. We'll get to that in just a minute. Why people were thinking that and were people thinking that? Absolutely they were. They were heartbroken. They were destroyed. Their faith shaken to their very core. See, see, if you were in the room with Jesus and you believed him, he was the Messiah. He was your Savior and you were in the room with him. And then he wasn't. You'd seen him raise Lazarus from the dead You'd seen him turn loaves and fishes into enough to feed over 5,000. You'd watched it with your own eyes. You had experienced it. You'd seen him healed lepers. You'd seen him with your own eyes do miracle after miracle after miracle. And how he loved people and how kind he was. How compassionate and merciful Jesus was. Why didn't he save himself? Have you ever asked the question, what do I do now? Perhaps it was said in a time of desperation. Maybe you came to the end of a road and had to make a decision about going in a new direction, new career, new school, new this, new that. Change, change is hard. A lot of the times, very likely there have been times in when you've had to, had to ask yourself or others, what do we do? What do I do now? There could even be things in your life right now. Right now, there could be things in your life that are leading you to ask this very question. What do I do? A job change, moving somewhere, relationship issues. What do I do now, you know, and life tends to give us many opportunities to ask the question, what do we do? And what do we do now? I would love for you to open your Bibles with me. If you have your Bible, grab it and open it to Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 13. Luke 24, beginning with verse 13. If you don't have a Bible with you, there should be one right in front of you in the pew.
If you're watching this at home or wherever you're watching this and you don't have a Bible and you need one, message me and we'll make sure you get one. Luke 24, beginning with verse 35. Now that same day, two of them, followers of Jesus, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and you don't know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? Jesus said. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped, we had hoped that he was the one, the one going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that he had seen, that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. That some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, <laughs> how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village in which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going to go further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. Then they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem and there they found the 11 and those with them assembled together and saying, mm -hmm. it is true, the Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. What an amazing story. What an amazing witness. You ever had you ever had your hopes and dreams dashed? You ever you ever had a, a big thing planned and it fell through? It's maybe something so important that you were heartbroken. Parents get pregnant and lose the baby. You have dreams for that child, don't you? You have dreams for that child only to find out that that child's not going to make it. Dreams, dash. That's the story of these people, these two people on the road to Emmaus. So three days after Jesus was crucified, his followers were still asking the question, what do we do now? 
What now? He was the one. I really thought it was true that he was going to be the Messiah. Was Jesus the Messiah or not? They asked themselves that. And why didn't he put up, put an end to the suffering of his people? Why did he do for us what he promised he was going to do? What just happened? They asked themselves, what do we do now? On the very day, now listen, I don't know how many times you've heard this story in your lifetime, but realize this is Sunday. This is Sunday morning that this happened. So it's in in exact alignment with where we're at today. Friday, on Good Friday, we mourned his loss. Today, we celebrate his resurrection, but these guys didn't know anything about it. On the day it happened, they didn't know. On the very day that Jesus resurrected from the dead, two of his followers were walking home from Jerusalem towards the town of Emmaus. And the Bible says they were talking about everything that happened. They were discussing what had happened. And if you remember when Jesus asked them, what are you talking about? They said their faces were downcast. They were sad. They were heartbroken. And they were confused and dazed and hurt and afraid. What happens next is really mind-blowing. It really is. I mean, think about this if it was you. Jesus himself walks up and he joins in the conversation. That's the first thing that would have uh, blown my mind is that me and my buddy are walking down the road and some complete stranger just walks up and like, what you talking about? What are you discussing? What's going on? And you're hurting. Okay, you you and your friend leave a funeral, a friend's funeral, and somebody comes up, hey, what's going on? What are you discussing? Man, will you leave us alone? We just came from a funeral. Wouldn't that possibly be your reaction? Think about where these two guys were. Jesus himself walks up and joins in the conversation. Good thing for these poor guys on the road that Jesus disguised himself from them, right? Because if you just seen a guy die three days ago and he walks up to you on the road, what are you going to do? It's going to be kind of a scary, weird situation, right? So he knew that. Jesus knew that. So he disguised himself from them. You know, it wouldn't have been the first time somebody mistook Jesus for a ghost. Remember when he walked on the water? Like, it's a ghost. No, it's not a ghost. It's me. It's Jesus. Cleopas, still looking pitiful and distraught, asked Jesus if he was the only person in Jerusalem that didn't know what was happening. I love it that Jesus didn't let him off the hook too easy either. Jesus being Jesus, he said, what things? He knew exactly what they were feeling, what they were thinking about, but I love it. What a Jesus thing to do. What things? Like he didn't already know. Do you think that there could have been a parallel between this story and the story between you and Jesus? How, you might ask? I think there certainly could be. Let me ask you a question, a couple of questions. Do you think that Jesus could come and visit you and disguise himself from you? Do you think that Jesus could come to you at any time, anywhere, in any circumstance, disguise himself and spend time with you? Okay. First, I want to say there's already 
a precedent for this in your Bibles that we just read. Could he visit you and disguise himself from you? Second question, does Jesus hear what you say? Does Jesus hear what you say? And my last question is, if Jesus did appear to you, would you recognize him? Would you know him? He himself said, my sheep recognize me. My people know me. One of the most amazing things about this encounter was with Jesus is that the two travelers both had already heard that Jesus was missing from the tomb. They had already gotten word on Sunday morning something was up. The women had gone to take care of Jesus' body to, to visit the tomb, and he was already gone. So the word was spreading pretty quickly that Jesus was missing from the tomb. They even knew people, if you noticed in the scripture, they knew other people who had gone to check it out for themselves. So they did have a little bit of questions. What kind of questions do you think they were asking? Well, where'd he go? Who took him? First of all, we watched our hero, our teacher, our superhero die when he could have saved himself. Now the insult that somebody stole his body. If you put these things in perspective, how traumatic would it be for ye to attend your loved one's funeral and then somebody stole their body? What would you think? What would you believe? What now? What do I do now? The men said they were hoping that Jesus was the Messiah, the one that would redeem Israel. They couldn't even begin to understand that the Redeemer of the entire world the redeemer of the entire world who had just opened the entire gates of heaven for all of us was walking on the road right beside of them, talking to them. They couldn't even fathom that. Not only was he walking beside them, he was listening to them. He was caring about them and he was loving them. Then Jesus said something amazing. How foolish are you and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets, all the prophets had spoken. Did not Christ have to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? Then Jesus proceeded to go over all the prophecies about himself to these two dumbfounded walkers. They had to be blown away. But they felt something. Did you hear what they said to each other a little bit later? Did our hearts not burn when we were on the road with him and he was opening the scriptures to us? You see, nobody speaks scripture like Jesus. These two had to be looking at each other like, foolish? Maybe Jesus loves to see us scratch our heads and go, what? I love this interaction. You see, Jesus is a master teacher and a rabbi, but he's so much more than that. You see, Jesus isn't quoting scripture. He is scripture. He's the author. It's different. As they got closer to Emmaus and as they turned for home, Jesus acted like he was going on. And the two travelers, intrigued and curious about their companionship with him, they begged him to come home with them. Oh, no, no, no. It's getting late in the day. 
is a much different time then. You people would invite complete strangers to come spend the night with them. Come stay with us. <laughs> and then they had their own personal last supper with Jesus. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. And he handed each of them a piece of bread. Then they saw him. I mean, they really saw him. How amazing is that? Jesus was with them and then Jesus disappeared. But what we need to understand is that he never really left them. And he never really leaves us either. Never really leaves us. They knew something was different about this person. They said that a fire burned inside of them while they were with him and his present was evident to them and it is to us as well. If you're open to it and you believe it, you know that Jesus is present with you all the time. All the time. The time. There's a great lesson for us who follow Jesus that no matter where we are, no matter how our hearts are feeling, no matter what's going on, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what our emotions are, no matter whether we're on a bumpy road or whether we're on a smooth road, whether it's good times or bad times. The good news is Jesus comes to us and his spirit abides with us and we're never, ever, ever, ever alone. He's our companion on this road that we travel. Remember a few minutes ago, I asked you a series of questions. Do you believe that Jesus could come to you and be with you? Do you believe that Jesus hears you when you speak? I ask you those questions. If we believe he is who he says he is, then you've already answered those questions because you know that he never leaves you and he never forsakes you and he's always walking with you and he's always listening to what you say and he always knows what you feel and he always knows what you love and he always knows what hurts you and he always knows what you miss and he always knows what is real in you no matter how people perceive you. Only Jesus knows the real you. He's always with us on this road. We're no different than the two people he encountered on the road to Emmaus. He is with us. He doesn't have to disguise himself, but a lot of times we don't recognize him either. What I love about Jesus is he comes to us. His spirit abides with us. We are never alone. He's our companion on this road. He's our good Samaritan. He's our safe buddy. Jesus is our safety buddy. He's our bodyguard. He's our listener, our teacher, our rabbi, our counselor, our encourager, and he's our shoulder to cry on. He is our Lord most high. What now? What now? Now that we know the truth. Now that we know he's with us and he's always with us, no matter what, he's always with us. What do we do once we encounter Jesus in our lives? We need to do exactly what the two travelers did. You remember what they did? 
We need to go tell people about Jesus. We need to share what he's doing for us to other believers and to the lost and the unsaved. Each person is on their own road to Emmaus, so to speak. Each one of us is. Where do you find yourself on the road on this resurrection day? Ask yourself, where where am I on this road? Do you feel like you're traveling alone today? Do you have baggage that you're carrying? Do you feel like the weight of what you carry with you is too much to bear? If you have companions, are they leading you to better things? Or do they keep you from better things? Who do you hang out with? Who influences you? What do you do differently with them than you do with other people? Let's go home today or wherever you're going today and think about this road you're on. Is it the right one? Are are you on the right one today? Are you on the right road? Are you headed in the right direction? And you know, the way God works is even if you don't believe in him, your gut's telling you if you're on the right path or not. Maybe you recognize Jesus as your companion on your road. Maybe you don't. But that doesn't mean he ain't working. He's always working, whether you believe or not. What road are you on? Are you traveling with the right people? Are you getting good directions? And Jesus will stay by your side. You may not always recognize that he's there, but he is always there. What now? What do we do now? We analyze where we're at on this road, if we're headed in the right direction, if we're surrounding ourselves with the right companions, the people that will help us go down the right road and stay in the right direction. Well, are we getting good directions? Your roadmap is the Bible and prayer and good, strong, faithful believers in Christ. It's where you'll find the directions that you need to get where you need to go with Jesus by your side. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for this road that we're on, Lord Jesus. Sometimes this road is bumpy and hard, or steep, slick, scary. And sometimes this road makes us lazy and content. I don't know that either road's where we want to be. But Father God, whatever road we find ourselves on today, Father, Lord Jesus, help us, remind us to recognize that you're with us, right beside of us, always, no matter what. When we're being good, you're with us. When we're not being so good, you're with us. Lord Jesus, Maddie sang a song today. It's a prayer. We need to pray for people. In Jesus' name, pray for healing, restoration of faith, revival. Lord Jesus, Father God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you for our time together, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the body of Christ. How beautiful it is, the hands and feet who bring good news of Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Our closing song today.
is number 165. Love for us to stand and sing this great song of the faith. Thank you for bumping down this road with us, Lord Jesus. Father God, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. Be with everybody here. Protect them. Help them. Lead them. And let them know that, Lord Jesus, you're with us always, always. In your precious, holy, amazing, incredible, wonderful, wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless. Have a great Resurrection Day. God bless, and I'll see you real soon.